Good morning, fans. This is your girl from Mel's Match Chat, and this is your official NXT Halloween Havoc preview and predictions. Hopefully, everybody's going to be a, going to have a great Saturday. This is going to be an easy, hopefully, pay-per-view or premium live event, whatever the case may be. Hopefully, that it's just going to be going off very soon. Like, I'm hoping to be on... YouTube around 10 30 quarter to 11 with the review so um yeah this is um this is going to be hopefully quick easy painless and get you in get you out and get you going home or you are already home wherever you know what I mean so um I'm hoping that everybody checked out episode 261 I don't know what was going on with my internet it cut me off but if you've seen the end of um dynamite um, John Moxley retained and he had MJF come out and basically it's going to be, um, Moxley versus MJF for the title at full gear, um, next month. So, um, we're all going to be settled for that. I'm going to be covering it. Don't worry about it. I got you people. I got you. So, um, I, um, also please go check out the rest of my content on the, uh, on YouTube, please like, share, and um, subscribe, and turn on all my notifications so when I go live, it, it you'll know about it. So um, yeah, I'm just taking out my ear earpiece. Um, so that is that. Also, please go support the people that I support. Go check out Harry's at Harry's.com. Go check them out and get all your shaving and toiletry essentials there. Please go check out. Um, my Astro Classics at MyAstroClassics.com and get all your beard essentials. Also, please go check out Liquid Death at LiquidDeath.com and get the three flavors on top of the regular spring water and the sparkling water, which is um, mango, orange, um, lime, and mixed berry. Please do me a favor. Also, please go check out... Um, HOG Wrestling at HOGWrestling.net and check, check their new next um, uh, event, which is Exodus on October 29th. So if you want to get tickets, go to the website. If you don't, and I'm hoping that it's going to be on Vite TV, go check that out. Also, please go check out Death Wish Coffee at DeathWishCoffee.com. And they just sold out of it as of today. I was like, what? It's the Blueberry Vanilla. But they still have on sale, which is the pumpkin chai coffee and the espresso on top of the others, the medium, the dark, and, and the Valhalla brand. So let's get this party started. Before we do that, hold on. Please go check out all my social media, which is Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Mel's Matt Chat. That's the handle. Go check me out on Facebook and tick, um, Snapchat. So... Now we can get this party going. NXT Halloween Havoc. I listened to the media uh, scrum, the um, the conference call, and Sean has um, announced, Sean Michaels is now doing it. He took the place of Triple H. December 10th deadline, NXT deadline, is going to be on the same day as Ring of Honor. Oh, for the love of Good, all that's good to, oh, my own, I don't know how the hell am I going to do this. They better have at least a good two-hour leeway here, because I'm telling you, if it's good current, I am screwed, all right? I'm screwed. Also, Sean is trying to fill big shoes due to the fact is that um, Triple H was such a big shoes to fill, so he's, he's trying to get everything, like, he's He's basically trying to get back what was taken, basically. And it's a long-ass process. Um, also, um, he's he they're doing things different down there now that they're actually going to prep somebody when they say, hey, I need them seven months. They need to get, if they're in the middle of a storyline or they're going into a storyline, to get that, that would be their last thing. Get their last licks in get them up to the main roster, and it's, it's, it should be this way. It shouldn't be like, 
five years down in NXT. It's ridiculous. Um, the Rock's daughter should be making her television debut, Ava Rain, which is Simone Johnson. Um, also, they are trying to make Halloween Havoc NXT's SummerSlam, which is a good thing, you know, bringing the, uh, the Halloween Havoc because WWE owns it and it's only apropos, you know. And, um, there was an announcement that this is not, this is somewhat got to do with NXT that, um, potentially next year we could be back having King of the Ring, King of the Ring, King, Queen of the Ring. It could be rebranded another name, but we still have the essence of having the pay-per-view because of the women and the men. So that's basically about it. We're going to have a really good uh, couple of matches. Hopefully we can get out by at least 11 o'clock. I'm not, I'm pushing it just a little bit. Pray to God it's going to be done. So let's get this started. Um, from last week's, um, well, not last week's, Tuesday's uh, NXT. By the way, if, you're, if, you, if, you, if you really wanted to do it perfectly, you could have open two tabs on your, on your computer have one on one side and have the other on the other side. And I got to watch both NXT and Dynamite. It was awesome. It was awesome. And it saved me so much time. So we have um, NXT. Tonight, they had on Tuesday from the Performance Center. It's the final push to Halloween Havoc. And it's a head-to-head -head ratings battle with Dynamite. So we had... Um, Pick Your Poison, which is Cora Jade got um, Rhea Ripley and Roxanne Perez got um, uh, Raquel Gonzalez, Rodriguez, whatever. So um, we start off with um, the Judgment Day making an entrance here to support Rhea Ripley, who was recruited by J Cora Jade. Now, I'm telling you, I would say to myself, oh, she's there alone. Nobody's going to, they're not going to bring her. You gotta fucking warn me now. You know, I have a little uh, soft spot in, in my heart for Mr. Dominic Mysterio. You know, my co he activated my cougar card, which I'm not liking too much because that means I know I'm getting older. All right. I'm 40 years old. I am not liking this whatsoever. But. <laughs> Dominic Mysterio. That's a change. So Rhea Ripley versus Roxanne Perez. We had a funny moment as Perez was making her entrance with Vic Joseph asking Booker T if he sees Perez as a prodigy and Booker not responding for like six seconds before finally saying, uh, yeah. I am not nearly as good as the play-by-play -play as Claire, so you have to deal with my mini breakdowns of this match. Here, Ripley is firmly in control, putting the boots to Perez with relatively ease. The crowd is loving, loving it, too, chanting various things for her. The story of the match is very clear, that Roxanne is up against someone the likes of which she's never had to deal with before her various comebacks getting shut down time and time again. Perez is battling as the match goes. She goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ripley, and it's not working out for the best of her. She had a counter, she had a counter ready for the Riptide, but couldn't hit it. Pop rocks. Then Dominic Mysterio got involved and distracting her briefly and giving Ripley the chance to hit her, finishing this time. Ripley defeated Perez via pinfall because of the riptide. Backstage, we see Cameron Grimes come up to Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. They talk about the OC being heartthrobs and the best in the business. Gallows asked if Grimes knew why they accepted his offer. He broke, broke out a big wad of cash because I've got the paper. And just said, yes, that's true. But also it's because they want to go to the moon. 
there is now a meme with the amount of money underneath Carl um, Gallo's nose. It's hilarious. It's that now they're dubbing in. Oh, this is how they got them. Uh, Triple H got him back. I'm sorry, but that is too funny in my in my, in my eyes. Tony says this match is about respect. So we, oh, sorry. I completely, okay. Tony D'Angelo and Sax are out. Tony has the mic and says it's a big night, even big night this evening. He can see Sax is ready to go. He's looking strong. Tony says this match is about respect and proving to everybody who he is and what he's about. Sax was eager and the crowd was ready and then D'Angelo said he'd do it only after the commercial break. So we have a commercial break. We're back, and Grayson Waller is being interviewed backstage about his match against Apollo Crews. He's upset about being asked about being behind going, going into the match. He says the only one with the guts and the talent to defeat Cruz and cap off the worst comeback story in WWE history. Suddenly, the video on the screen behind him, Chucky, yes, the killer doll from the movie, says the match against Cruz will be a spin the wheel, make the deal. We're back in the ring and ready to find out who D'Angelo is selected for stats. And we have the melodious tones of Shinsuke Nakamura, the king of strong style. He was actually over in Japan to say goodbye to Antonio Inoki, WWE Hall of Fame. Er, so hopefully, maybe he did a little business for WWE, but we can only hope, you know. So Stax versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Big pop for the music, definitely. Huge chance for Nakamura to start. Stax responded with a headlock. He got pushed off the ropes and ate an axe kick for his troubles. Joseph tells us Stax had someone else starting his car for him during the week. He w was so worried. He's getting his ass handed to him in the match, with Nakamura hardly respecting his offense. Vic cuts in to let us know Grayson Waller has left the building. Back in the ring, Stax worked out a, submis a submission and even manages to knock Shinsuke down, but it isn't for long because before he he's getting beat up again while the crowd sings Nakamura's song. Stax clearly at the end goes out with a pride telling Shinsuke to bring it just before the Kinshasa. Nakamura defeated Stax via pinfall because of the Kinshasa. Tony D said, you show guts I didn't know you had to Stax. It seems proud of his underling representing the family. Nathan Frazier is talking to Axiom backstage about their series of matches. They're very happy with three battles they had, and Axiom is saying he's, he'll cheer Frazier on in the North American title match this Saturday. Robert Stone and Von Wagner show up, interrupt them, and say none of what they did will matter because Wagner is winning the title this weekend. Frazier wants to get things going now, but Axiom keeps him calm. We have Alba Fire versus Sonia Deville. My nose is fucking running like you wouldn't believe tonight. Oh my god. I'm going to take a Benadryl tonight. That's it. Alba Fire is Son versus Sonia Deville. Deville came out with Gigi Dolan and JCJ by her side, but no Mandy Rose in sight. At least not yet. The match didn't go long with quick back and forth and saw a fire deal with Toxic Attraction getting involved, fighting them off, and rolling up DeVille for the win. Fire, De fire defeated DeVille via pinfall. After the numbers game caught up and Alba was overwhelmed, then over the loudspeaker, the theme, the theme hit and Rose made her return. She had a mic and said she's going to fight fire with fire and she She's pl she plant plans to be more callous and more vicious and more ruthless. As she was saying, this fire was single-handedly fighting off the three women in the ring. Mandy just kept powering through. Once in the ring was clear, Mandy got in, but Alba had a baseball bat and kept her at bay. 
quick jump backstage, and Wesley and Oro Mansiah are chatting it up when Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams show up out of nowhere, and a big brawl breaks out, cut to the ring, and now they're fighting up on the stage. We come back from commercial. We have, we're back, and it's right into the match itself. Wesley and Oro Mansiah versus Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams. These guys are going fast and furious, throwing all sorts of offense in each other. Williams keeps turning the tide, cheating to give him to give his team the edge, and the ref isn't looking. The second time he did so, that gave Hayes the opportunity to hit a leg drop off the top rope, and Lee so huge diving his own head into the mat. It was enough to finish. Hayes de and Hayes and Williams defeated Liam and Sai via pinfall. They kept battling after the match with the heels refusing to stop. Von Wagner came out of nowhere with bi a big boot to Hayes, only to get laid out by Nathan Frazier out of nowhere himself. Cut to a promo with the dyad. Joe Gacy is upset with the hypocrisy running rampant in NXT, calling Cameron Grimes the, post the poster boy for it. He recruited the OC, and that's disappointing, but no mass of humanity will stop them from tearing him down. We come back from commercial. Braun Breaker is interviewed backstage, and he said he's down to fire things up again tonight, and he runs through people. He asked what we can accept expect to see from his appearance on the KO show tonight. And he put Kevin Owens over big saying, something incredible always goes down on those shows and he expects the same he expects the same for tonight. We have shown a graphic telling us all three participants in the Triple Threat title match this weekend will be our guest. Time for the six-man tag. The Schism versus Cameron Grimes and Luke and Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, which still fucking screws me up. Like these guys are back in WWE. <clears throat> Rick Fowler got caught up in, up in the good guy corner and ate a ton of offense. What the fuck did I go? Rick Fowler got caught up in a good old good guy's corner and ate a ton of offense while the crowd chanted, too sweet, woo, woo. I can't stand that, all right? It's annoying. It didn't It didn't turn around until Jager Reed tagged himself in and used the opportunity to attack Anderson from the back. Booker T went on a whole spiel about not wanting friends and Grimes want being smart to pay for OC's help and getting them out of there uh, there after. I think they're going to treat the OC now as like almost like an, uh, the uh, uh, the acolytes the the um or the um uh Layfield and um Simmons. We come back from commercial break. Shizum were in control through the break and came back still dominating the match. Joe Gacy got into a fight with I mean, with got into a fight with Grimes and took out frustrations on him. The action continues, but because it's a six man, it's broke down into bodies flying everywhere. When the dust was settled, Grimes has taken Fowler and Gacy out, leaving Reed in there to get double teamed by the OC. It didn't end well. Grimes Gallows defeated the Schism with um, the, the um, what is it called? The Magic Killer. Fear Mahan was interviewed backstage. He asked what he whispered to Senga's ear last week. Fear refuses to answer, saying it's just for Senga and no one else. Senga shows up and says he's ready to listen. Fear was very pleased and walked off with him. Nikita Lyons and Zoe Starks are backstage at table signing and the contracts for women's tag team title match. The champs also put pen to paper and were told 
the match will happen next week. They talk some trash each other before Carter and Chance walk out, saying they're better team and they'll win next week. Julius Creed and Damon Kemp were giving the picture-in-picture -picture interview treatment. Creed said feels pressure is privilege, and he's nervous about his brother's career being in his hands, but their parents raised them to do the right thing, and he'll get the job done. Kemp laughs at him and starts talking, but Creed tells him to shut up, and he's getting payback soon enough. Kemp gets the chance to talk and calls him an arrogant loser who is jealous. What is it to be jealous of? Everything. Ha, fair enough. Kemp says Julius is going to get his work on work, going to get this work on Saturday. He says maybe he'll hit Julius in the back 10 times with a chair like he did his brother. Julius comes back and says, Damon peaked in high school and he's not even the best athlete in his own family. Kemp come back with a laugh and crack jokes about Julius not drinking enough milk. Julius ends by saying there's no remorse and no sympathy. And the only thing he'll feel this weekend is the ambulance door when he is shutting it. Kemp promises to put his brother in the unemployment line because he's going to need a job. Yeah. Aisha Tyler introduces us to the host of Halloween Havoc, Shotzi Blackheart. That was a no-brainer. She rides in her, her tank to a big ovation. Everyone's happy as hell to see her back in NXT again. Surprise! They chant welcome home at her. If there is one WWE superstar that screams Halloween, it would be Shotzi, baby. I hosted Halloween Havoc in 2020, and it was one of the most horrifyingly badass days of my life. So this Saturday, we've got to go even more balls to the wall. I get the final piece of my costume this Friday when Raquel and I win the WWE Tag Team Titles, Women's Tag Team Titles off of Damage Control. And then I'm going to make this year's Halloween Havoc, the most terrifying extravaganza in NXT history. That brought out Zion Quinn. He called her the perfect host for Halloween Havoc and then offered to be her co-host when it was done with the, his appeal. But before she could respond, Quincy Elliott hit the scene to say she's a ballsy girl and she needs a bona fide screen queen for her co-host. The crowd chanted for Quincy. Shotzi offered up an idea. Whoever wins the match they're about to ha have gets to be my her co-host. Zion Quinn versus Quincy Elliott. We come to commercial break and we come back with Sh Shotzi joins the commentary and says, and say, damage control has been a pain in her booby. Instead of commentating the match, they're talking about bacon and eggs. Booker T tries to steer them back to the action in the ring. Speaking of which, Quentin managed to lift Elliot up over his shoulders, but was crushed underneath the Super Diva. He got frustrated and went out of the ring to maybe grab a weapon, but he was met with Hank Walker, who wouldn't let him. Let him. Back in the ring, Elliot hit a diva drop, and was that was all she wrote. Elliot defeated uh, Quinn, so um, Quincy Elliot is the is going to be with Shotzi this weekend. After Shotzi and Elliot danced in the ring, as Walker smiled and looked on from the outside, Chase Yu checked in. Thea Hale is upset about Keanu James beating her. She wants another crack at her. But that's for an after class. Mr. Chase gives us a rundown of Halloween Havoc's story history, including Hulk Hogan versus Ric Flair, Rey Mysterio versus Eddie Guerrero, and Mandy Rose starting her long reign, also the Yeti. Oh yeah, your homework is to watch the show this weekend. Chucky again showed up on the video screen and cut a promo straight out of Chase U, cursing up a storm. Thea responds, 
What the fuck? Raquel Rodriguez makes her entrance and Booker T marks out over her back posts. We come back from commercial. Another tag team contacted contract signing. Pretty deadly are smug, but Mal Malik Blade and Andrews Anafi are promising to take their titles from them. They go down next week. Raquel Rodriguez versus Cora Jade. The match started, and not surprisingly, Raquel was getting all the offense. She was dominant early and often with Cora offense, consisting of things like get out of the way and let Rodriguez smack her hand on the commentary desk. Jade brought in a weapon and tried to use it, but Raquel took it from her. Jade smacked her in the face, so Rodriguez went ahead and used the weapon and got herself disqualified. Jade defeated Rodriguez via disqualification. Technically a win for Jade, but Jade was getting destroyed the whole way. Perez made her way out to, out to get some shots in, and Jade ran away while Roxanne got up on Rodriguez's shoulders to end the segment. They run down the card for Halloween Havoc before we get to the main event, which is the KO show. Kevin Owens makes his entrance, smiling and happy to be there. He runs ringside and hugs Booker T before dabbing up Vic Joseph too. We come back from commercial to backstage, a bunch of guys and gals playing a drinking game and prepping for the next segment Halloween Havoc, hey, an Indy Hartwell appearance, which she should be with Candice LeRae right now. Back to the ring, entrance time for Braun Breaker, J.D. McDonough, and Ilya Dragunov are already in the ring, seated next to Owens. K.O. welcomes us. He tells us Shawn Michaels has asked him to come around for this and considering he's the reason Owens became a wrestler, he's he currently wasn't going to tell him no. His role tonight is to make sure no man wreaks havoc. Because you know the name of the show this weekend. But I'm bumped. <laughs> Owens says the guy stirring the pot lately has been creepy weirdo Mr. J. D. McDonald. Google me. Mc Wait a second, Mick, don't Google me. <laughs> Kevin, can you call me whatever you want? In about four days' time, you're going to call me the new NXT champion. Good comeback. He said it's been, he has been on his best behavior while the other two have been kicking up dust and getting each other, getting at each other. Dragunov said it, it wasn't a mistake hitting Braun, even though he was aiming for JD. And when he stood over Breaker, struggled for air, and realized he's only human. You are beatable. Breaker gets his turn to talk and says, over his dead body, he will, he, he, will he, anyone be taking the title from him? If Ilya wants a friend to get a dog, as long as he's breathing, he'll be NXT champion. Owens jumps in again and, to say, he sees what's happening here, and JD is pitting Braun and Ilya against each other, hoping they'll tear each other up and he can clean up the scraps. They've got things figured out because no matter what, JD can't win the title because no one, not even his own mother, who Kevin talked to, likes him or wants him to be champion. McDonald's has has thought about how to get back at Dragunov since Ilya went, sent him packing from NXT UK. And the best revenge will be winning the title and keeping it from him. You will always be a contender and never a champion, Ilya tells him. Hey, I'm going to put your... gonna, I'm going... Hey, I'm going to put your ass in the same category as him. Braun butts in to say. Ilya reminds him... He lost the last triple threat match he was in. They stand up and get ready to go at it. Owens comedically apologizes to HBK, making sure everyone pauses so he can bail, and then telling them to go ahead and go at it. They just they do just that. After the back and forth, Ilya holds up the title 
and then Austin Theory's music plays. He comes out, holds up the Money in the Bank contract, and that is it. I believe, I believe that if they're going to put the title on Ilya, it's going to be a Money in the Bank, and that's how they're going to get the, uh, the, the um, briefcase off of Austin Theory. They should have did it my way. They should have went all fucking year. He doesn't realize he has the fucking thing. The Money in the Bank fucking pay-per-view is coming up. He's oblivious. And they're just about to start the fucking show. And he hasn't cashed in. There you go. He's the only one that hasn't cashed in. He's, he's, the, no, he's the first time in history uh, since this... This has been invented that he hasn't cashed it. He will be one and only in history. But that is that. So we're going to go on to the, um, my, uh, picks for NXT Halloween Havoc. NXT Championship match, Braun Breaker versus Ilya Dragunov versus JD McDonald. I'm going to say what I just said. Ilya Dragunov is going to pick a win and Austin Theory is going to cash it. NXT Women's Championship match. Mandy Rose versus Alba Fire. I'm hoping Alba Fire takes the title. NXT North American Championship ladder match. Carmelo Hayes versus Oya Messiah versus Wesley versus Von Wagner versus Nathan Frazier. I'm going to say Nathan Frazier is going to win. Weapons Wild match. Cora Jade versus Roxanne Perez. I'm going to say Roxanne Perez finally gets the... Cora Jade's finally going to get the comeuppance. So, Roxanne Perez. Ambulance match. Julius Creed versus Damian Kemp. If Julius loses, Brutus Creed will have to leave NXT. And I'm going to say, obviously, Julius Creed. They're not going to get rid of him. Spin the wheel, make the deal match. Grayson Waller versus Apollo Crews. I'm going to take... Um, Apollo Crews. And the co-hosts are Shotzi Blackheart and Quincy Elliott. And that is really about it. That's it. It's going to be a good and fun Saturday evening. That's all. But I will be on immediately after this. I'm not going to just say, hey, I'm going to go to bed and everything like that. I'm going to do this, get this over with, because I like to take the rest of the Sunday because i got a lot of shit to do um, this coming um a week so that is that please do me a favor go check out my rest of my stuff that's on this page including episode 261 all the preview and predictions all the reviews are on there go check that out please like share subscribe turn on all my notifications so when i go live you'll know about it also please go check out all my social media Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, Mel's Match Chat. Also, go check me out on Snapchat and on Facebook. Please go check out Harry's at harrys.com and get all your short toiletry and beard essentials there. Also, please go check out um, and get all your beard essentials at myastroclassics.com. Also, please go check out Liquid Death at liquiddeath.com. Get their three flavors, which are mango, orange, lime, and mixed berry. Also, please go check out Death Wish Coffee at deathwishcoffee.com. To let you know, they they just brought back blueberry vanilla. It's already sold out, so you're going to have to get on your waiting list or you know just keep looking at the website as much as you possibly can. But until then, you got espresso and... Uh, pumpkin chai coffee, which I love. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my fucking God. 
Um, also, please go check out um, HOG Wrestling at HOGWrestling.net. October 29th, you've got um, Exodus. Awesome card. I have, I'm needing to memorize the damn thing. Don't worry, I'll memorize it by tom tomorrow night. I mean, tonight. You know what I mean. This is being recorded, so on Friday night after SmackDown. Um, go check them out, and go. hopefully it'll be on Fight TV. Also, please go check out in the greater area of Pennsylvania, Outbreak Wrestling and Sanctuary Wrestling. I want everybody to have a great Saturday evening. I will see you right here, right after. I'm going to set up the stream. I'm going to get home, and we're going to go live. We're going to go and get my reactions and whatnot and go over the show. And then, until then, go check out episode 261. And, um, again, it got cut off because of my stupid internet. I don't know what the heck was wrong. But, anywho, I love you all. Have a great Halloween Havoc tonight. And just be you. All right? I love you all. You have a great uh, pay-per-view. See you after the pay-per-view. <sighs>